What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Where the Water Tastes Like Wine, and I'm drunk. <laughs> yeah, give us a few minutes here. We're actually going to uh, get right into the episode, wait for people to get into chat, and I'll be right back. All right, everybody, here we are. We're back, and we're in the game. We were actually last just here in New Jersey. We checked out the really creepy story of the flying goat. Uh, let's see what we can find in this little tiny shack. You notice a black rose sitting on a fence post, watching you with unsettling intensity. Hey, it blurts. Hey, friend. Hey, you hear about trains? It gives a throaty cackle. Locomotion. That's the life. I got some good travel tips here. All right, ask about the travel. You ever ride a train, it asks. With your budget, you'll need to. Hop on at a train yard, though. Fast and convenient. Most of railroad bulls really don't like it when you ride in the empty blast cars. If you get caught, you'll be beaten. It hops and pecks at something on the ground. On the positive side, maybe you'll meet someone to trade stories with. But if you don't like the sound of that, you can hitchhike. Find a friendly car, it laughs. I feel sorry for you land lubbers. No wings, just motors. You can't even cross rivers when you want to. Only at safe crossings. <laughs> you got a point there? Owls do. You notice that it, its beak doesn't move as it speaks, but before you can tell anything else about it, it flies off. Dude, we're tripping balls now. All right, so we're in New Jersey, New York. Uh, we've been in New York before. Well, looks like we've got the hell is that what is that I know we got a crow but what the hell is that I don't know what the hell that is maybe another crow let's go check it out or the crow okay we're right on that thing I guess we already got it well shit all right, we got a house up here. We'll check that out, and then we'll see if we can't find another campfire. Is there anybody close by? Mm, no, we got the story with the people with the things. We could go right over to the edge towards Canada. 
Well, yeah, and we can go see our loser friend. Welcome back, Joe. So maybe we'll head up here. I can't remember who the hell that is. It's the kid, I think. I think. So we'll head over to that house up here, and then we'll start walking out towards the east. Yeah. There we go. You spend a while in the cool shade at, the ga at this gas station. You know, three kids sitting beside their family car while their parents argue loudly with the cashier inside. The children seem embarrassed. You see the oldest brother lean over and distract his siblings with a story. Listen in. He starts telling them a story of a storm generated by a gigantic bird. You realize almost instantly that he's telling a version of the tale of the massive thunderstorm, but with a new, exciting, over-the-top details. He tells it well. When his parents come stomping furiously out of the gas station, you make yourself scarce, missing the end, the ending of the boy's new story. But the fright you heard is definitely easy to remember. I'll stick it with you for a It'll stick with you for a while. I'll stick it with you. Yeah, I'll stick it to you, all right, stupid kid. Okay, so let's go towards, uh, we're going towards Canada. Kind of saunter our way over this way here. Well, I do have to apologize for him. Or apologize to him, I mean. I don't see the point. Okay, we're going the right way. But if you feel obliged, to go say, So sorry, Andy. You know, like, yeah, whatever. And then give you a BJ in chat. <laughs> Alright, we're almost there. Canada in the US of A. Are we in the right setting? Oh man, we're not even close. I thought we'd be a hell of a lot closer to this. There's not even any houses around. Buffalo, that's where we're going. Nice. Been there before, too. New York. Uh, man, I've said much worse, and so has everybody else. Really, it's not that bad. What do we have? The man here? is the color of mill dust. Sweet. His smile creases his face like folds in dough. He gestures you inside the dilapidated structure and shouts over the sound of driving wheels. You're welcome to sleep here. Oh. You don't want to rest by the river. Not in the evening. Insects. No, oh, I thought he said, never mind. And no, it's not Joe. Uh, it's North America, yes, but not American. Uh, it's two separate continents. Man shoves the broken door closed behind you. The mill is warm, and the air is heavy with the powder kicked up by your entrance. You realize how easy it would be to drift off on this pile of sacks to the loud but constant sound Should we of sleep the grinding or wheels. Not? Consciousness is elusive. Your limbs throb with a dull fatigue, and your eyes are sticky with dust. The man suddenly grips your legs and drags you toward the millstone. Holy crap. You do not love my daughter. You will not have her. I will not let you hurt her. His uh. voice is pained, not angry. Wait, what? Your hand catches a flower sack printed with brightly colored flowers. Yay. A puff of flour makes you sneeze, and you wake. <laughs> the mill is quiet. Its work's long disconnected. In your hand is the faded remnant of what might once have been a bag. Or a piece of a dress. Wow. Yeah, but we're two different um, sets of people, Joe. Like, truthfully, we are. That'd be like saying, um, well, Britons and you're European, so you're all the same. Right? And it's not, because there's different areas, right? The policeman in the truck on this corner is having a pretty wild argument with someone on the other end of the radio. 
No, he keeps saying. No way. You listen in as the man on the radio finishes a wild story about a mysterious woman preaching the gospel to all who would listen. Wait a second. I swear this is what happened. The cop over the radio insists. Then when it clicks, you know this story? It's a stranger version of the story of the mysterious woman who wanted to go to church, but some bits left out or replaced. Ain't true, the cop in the truck size, if he only knew. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah, we've seen multiple ghosts this is. Is Who this? Quinn. I remember hey, you. Hey traveler, come to join my fire again? I certainly did. I'm going to scare the shit out of you. Take that knife and cut your face. Well, I guess I know you well enough to let you set yourself down for a spell. Woohoo. You remember Cass and Flip? Uh yeah, that's Flip and that's Cass, right? You want to hear more about my travels? Well, sure, why not? Nothing better than trading stories around the fire. And I got stories. <laughs> so do I, you little snot-nosed kid. I want to hear one of them venturing <laughs> tales. Got any? Venturesome tales? Oh, hell yeah, dude. You don't even know some of the shit that I've been through. Here's one. About me on a bridge. Well, that was a lively tale. <laughs> yeah, I'm right, little fool. Freedom. Well. No, Aftia. No. Teacher used to talk about freedom like America was eat up with it. But yep. the tramping kind seems to be just about the only real freedom still in supply. That's right. That's why I tramp myself all over the world. Ain't no freedom from an empty stomach or bad weather, unless you're rich. I want to hear a story about ghosts or murderers or something. Scary stuff. What? You want to hear a story about goat murderers? That's weird, dude. It's really specific, too. Uh, well, there's the murder that we committed. <laughs> um, where is the ghost of a woman executed in Paris? The strangest street. Uh, the winged goat. That'll scare the shit out of you. Little bastard. You spin a good yarn. I was shivering there for a little bit. That's right, you better check your draws. Sad. Well, see, so you think just because I'm young, I gotta be sad. Crying after my mama every night. Yeah, and sucking on the little teats. I don't need you looking after me, so if you're offering, don't. And I thought I told you to be respectful. Oh, you little pecker. What you really ought to be asking yourself is if you want to keep enjoying my spot or not. Yeah, you know what? I'll take that knife and I'll cut you and your dogs. How about that? I want a story that scares me now i'm older almost nobody can do it give me your oh, best shot oh you just wait uh what was the one you said the creepy mill or the hotel burning yeah bondage let's tell him about bondage that'll scare the shit out of him <laughs> uh let's see a grave robber at the burial mound um sugar king cutters blinded to the threat of death um uh, no Farmers who gave you lemonade. That one was creepy, right? Mm, yeah. <laughs> what? Wow. That's the stuff, stranger. Spooky campfire tales are my favorite. Mm hmm. Wishes come true, huh? Yeah, like that knife. It's gonna cut you. Hmm. If I had to say, it'd be great to have red beans and rice cooked with some fatty bacon. Uh, sorry, dude. All I got is black beans and quinoa. Sorry. Supposed to be a Mississippi River specialty, but I ain't never had it. Haha, <laughs> you suck. I've had like six meals, and I threw some in the garbage because I was so full. I want to hear a story about ghosts or murderers or something. Scary stuff. Let's tell them about fluffy bunnies. Just to mess with them. There. Creepy Mo by Buffalo. Wow. That's the stuff, stranger. Spooky campfire tales are my favorite. You actually had that for a meal tonight? Nice. My family. Yeah. I don't really care about your family, dude. There ain't no way I'm gonna start jaw flapping about those bastards. Judas's. The lot of them. Enough said. Wow. That's rough, dude. No wonder he talks so much shit about me. He doesn't even give a damn about his own family. You got any stories that are a little sad? Yep, got just the one for you, little jerk. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, two men who mistook each other. Where the hell is the sad stories? Uh, let's see. Where the hell is it? And then you get your revenge on the cat with that one, Joe. Stormed by the big bird. Uh, the story of the Memphis man, I'm okay with death. I don't get too much out of tales that are so cheerful. Not enough excitement for me. Oh, oops. What's my future look like? Doom and gloom. I ain't looking for a traveling companion, if that's what you mean. I don't even want to talk to you, but you're passing time, buddy. Uh, I need a place to stay that's nice and warm. I do fine by myself, so just stick to mine in your own. <laughs> I'll stick my foot in your ass, too. Oh, heck. The night's over already. I sure enjoyed talking to you, but I gotta get on. I think I'll see what's happening up the road this way. I'll be sure to not go that way. Have a nice night. The tramping life suits me just fine. Every day's adventure. With things being so depressed, folks walk around like it's the end of everything good. But it ain't. Plenty nice things to see if you know where to look. Ass. Alright, Quinn, chapter two. Over. Buffalo. Hey, what the hell? I thought we already clicked on this. We have something new here. Ooh, what story's going on over here? Oh, we already know that. Wait a second, I know this song. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Creepy Mill, yeah, we did that. Okay, so where are we headed? We keep going along. Let's see, where are we? Oh, there's that little jerk. Uh, oh, wow, we got a long ass way to go. Hmm. So if we go down through Ohio, we talk to this little chap here, and then when we go to Indiana, we haven't been there yet, and we haven't seen this guy yet, as far as I know. There. Kentucky? Why the hell would I do that? I'm going to go to this little place in the mountains. Definitely going to be a creepy story here. Dude all living out in the mountains all by himself, killing passerbyers just like me. Next thing you know, I wake up and I have no kidneys. <laughs> a horse auction. A well-dressed man waves you over, making some big deals today, he brags, fingering a bill where you, where you can see. Get me when my number 60 goes up, okay? You stand in the crowd and wait and run back to fetch him. He's, he pays you absurdly well for doing almost nothing at all. Fantastic. What a great plan. Can I walk across this? Yes, I can. Oh, no, I can't. Can I? Oh, slowly making progress. All over the mountain we go. Did we go to Pittsburgh? Oh, uh oh. Oh, uh oh. Sad boy's there. Don't want to go back and see him yet. We'll come back to Pittsburgh later. Because we just don't have enough stories to uh, to tell to actually get further with him. So we got to talk to the gambler again. She seems like she'd be pretty easy. Yeah, I said it. And you are all thinking it too. Okay, it's almost nighttime. We got the story over there. The Midwest. Oh, I guess it kind of sessions off into two different places. Well, we'll go check out what the hell is over here. Is this a church? I don't know what that logo is. Cleveland. The barn and silo have seen better days. One big storm might bring the whole structure down. A man hollers. Ken? Ken? I know you're here, boy. He sees you and lopes across the field toward you. You seen a boy around? About 14. 
He sighs. My boy is missing. I haven't seen him since last night. He swallows. He ain't the type to run off, neither. Can you spare a minute to help look? I'm worried sick. You climb the ladder and make your way across the roof. A trail of empty beer bottles leads you past a discarded shirt and to the base of the silo. You climb up. There's a hole in the silo roof, a rupture where rotten wood gave way under something large. You maneuver your way along the edge, keeping your weight off the rotted panels. You poke your head inside. He's there, half submerged in the grain. He's been dead for half a day at least. The man's waiting at the bottom of the barn ladder. Anything? There's a spark of hope in his eyes. He chokes back a sob. I told him not to go up there. I told him. He looks up at the tower, then turns to you, tears tracking down his grimy cheeks. Why didn't he listen? Why, hello there. Look like that's a heavy bag you're carrying. Let me get that for you. I insist. You see this uniform? It means you can trust me to make sure this is the most comfortable journey you've ever had in your life. Who am I? Well, I'm no George, I'll tell you that. But that's not important. This trip is about you, friend. Have any optimistic tales? I'd like to hear one of those. Oh no, I that had myself one muted. Will probably ruin the mood if I share it in our quarters. I try to mute when they're talking just so that it sounds better and you can hear everything they're saying. The future? We're making it. <laughs> There's never been anyone like us Pullman Porters. It's why we have so much pride. We're setting standards for future folks, and we know just how damn high those standards are. Hey, do you know any spooky stories I can share with the boys tonight? <laughs> yeah, do I ever. Death, change, endings, and moving on. Uh, no. Yes, a woman executed in Paris long ago. Welcome, Tumblr. How uh, you doing? Might not be telling that one to the boys, actually. Why the hell not? And why didn't it open his eyes? The sadness. <laughs> no, no sadness here. When you ride on one of Mr. George Pullman's sleeping cars, you leave your sadness behind. I bet. You're probably giving me drugs, aren't you? I can personally assure you of that. Right on. You got any stories with a bit of excitement to them? Mm-hmm. I just don't know which one to do. Uh... Strange Man Quinn's Adventures? Um, you're a little bit behind, Joe. Mm, yeah, 
Uh, the bridge story should be exciting. I think. Didn't I hear that story on the radio? Hmm. You told it better, though. It's as I was freaking there, dude. If you're looking for freedom, just think about how magnificent a train is. How the railroad binds this country together. Hop on and go anywhere. That's freedom. And that's my life. Lucky you. Anyway, I'm in the mood for a good happy story. You got any? Maybe. Uh, man who made molasses. I think that's a happy story. Just like I told you, friend. Miles of smiles. <laughs> Joy. A good porter always finds his own happiness in the joy he brings to passengers through good work. No, I'm not reading it late at all. You're behind. You're you know what way we call this though. job? Miles of Smiles, friend. Miles of Smiles. Miles of Smiles? Is your name Miles? Because that would be even better. Anyway, you must have some funny stories to tell. Share one. No, I don't. Because the duck story is not funny. No, that's a scary one. That's about death and change. Uh, that one was kind of creepy with the pigeons. That's a little scary. It wants a funny, funny, sorry, funny, 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 huh? Shaw, he wasn't very funny, was he? And this one wasn't funny to the other dude. Go, press the number one. Let's see here. Yeah, you're about 20 seconds behind. There you go. Um, the grave robber, no. That's not funny either. I don't know what the hell was considered funny. I can't remember half of the damn stories. Uh, Queen's adventures aren't funny at all. They're sad. The bull terrorized. The two women arrested for bootlegging. Uh, I'm going to try the two lighthouse keepers. Well, if that one makes you happy, I suppose it's worth telling. Well, kiss my ass. <laughs> the past? Uh, that's a tricky thing. Yeah. Yes, porters may remind you of a certain type of way folks of our type used to be. There's no fight in that. Just happily working past it. Another night over. I surely did enjoy all those stories, though. Maybe next time I'll let down my hair a bit. What do you say? I'd love to see your ponytail. You must excuse me, friend. What kind of porter am I saying this trip is all about you, only to start talking about my own damn self? Yeah, I agree. But enough of my indulgences. No tip for you. I hope I see you again. You will. Well, you're going to Indiana. I'm not going there, but we'll see you sometime. The Pullman Porter. Where are we going? Uh, we're going south, uh, southwest. And I'm stuck on some bushes. And I can't see my thing. And we're going, excuse me, we're going the right way. We're going to Columbus, Ohio. Christopher Colombo in Ohio. Let's see what we got going on here. Oh, we got another story. It's break time at this half-finished bridge. The workers are gathered around a young man who sits on a bucket like a king. They listen rapidly to a story with the bushwhacker's vengeful ghost. About the bushwhacker's vengeful ghost. He realizes it's a story of the wounded soldier, but heavily embellished. The young man on the bucket tells it masterfully, doing all the voices as if he's, as if he's told it a thousand times before. What a story! 
It's nothing close to what actually happened, but this version is pretty good. You'll have an easy time remembering it. Yeah, baby! We gotta know the story. And now I'm gonna rob these people. The car is a life <laughs> Your one hope to escape the encroaching storm. It rattles along a few yards ahead of the storm front, jouncing and juddering, one pothole away from being swallowed by the choking dust. Whoa. A figure clings to support straps mounted on the back. I'm going to catch right on that thing. You grab the straps and haul yourself up. Oh, shouts the woman on the back, a fellow observer. She's wrapped in a scarf and aviation goggles, juggling a pen and a notebook while hanging onto the unsteady car. The dust scours your face and rips at your clothes. We're not done with our observations. She threads one arm through the straps and makes another attempt to write, but it comes out illegible. Blast it. Get inside and take dictation, will you? <laughs> I'll give you how <laughs> never mind. You never mind. Her through the open back window, and she hands you pen and notebook. You scribble furiously while she dictates the finer qualities of the dust and wind assaulting the car Ooh. until her voice is hoarse. That'll do. She bangs on the roof. Judith, let's go. Nice. The woman who studied dust storm. Sounds interesting enough. Where are we? Uh, we can go meet up. No, we're going to go into wherever the hell this is. That's what I was thinking, Missy. Wait, she's, wait, she wants me to taste, she wants to taste my, what? And we're in Cincinnati, baby. Let's see what's going on in this fine-ass little town. Uh, let's explore. The corridors of Cincinnati's Music Hall reverberate with the sounds of an orchestra warming up for rehearsal. If we unbolt the light rig, we can crush them, says a voice up ahead. No, another answers. Hiding Baldi's baton will be sufficient to stop the din. What are these people doing? The tuxedoed men are slightly transparent. Mustachio on the right has his arms folded. The weaselly one on the left scowls. They start at your arrival. I'm gonna undo those bolts. Weasel feature vanishes into thin air. Damn it all, says the other man. Are you ghosts? We used to be members of the orchestra until, well, you know. Patrick doesn't care for the new blood. It seems like talent died with us, so he does his damnedest to stop them playing. But I can't allow violence against fellow artists. Help me stop him. Uh, all right. And no, it's Cincinnati, Ohio. With the right tool, you can banish them from the hall. You see... No spirit can stand the sound of the purest of all instruments. Uh, violin or piano, what should we do? I'm gonna say piano. Piano. Violin? Alright, no. Fine. See, it's a freaking no. piano. What? No. The banjo. He shakes his head, exasperated. No! The triangle! What? The orchestra has one, but their percussionist's a sop. He never hits it right. If you can get there, you can ensure the only thing brutalized here today is Chopin. Oh, yeah, we have to do that. The orchestra is midway through practice. They're in dire need of it. <laughs> the percussionist dozes on his stool. Everyone's oblivious to the muttering on the lighting rig. Uh, should we rush for it, or should we not risk it? We get a really good story if he crushes everybody. Or we can run in and die. Mm. I think maybe we should rush for it. 
You sprint down the aisle and elbow through the incensed musicians. The percussionist falls off his stool as you clamber over his xylophone. You grab the beater and bring it down onto the triangle, eliciting a pure, resounding note. And the rafters ring with laughter. The mustachioed ghost appears next to you, doubled over, invisible to the furious orchestra. <laughs> I never thought you'd fall for that. The triangle, for God's sake. <laughs> Thanks for shutting them up, though. <laughs> nice. Now. Um, now, let's look for work. Feel good about today, frozen young man in line with you. Shut up, Bill. We'll side with Bill. Taking all comers. Fuck you, Bill. Cynic shouts. We had nothing to do with this. Move on. Now. Store. Mm, no. Nope. Hang on. Train station. We can go to Nashville, Washington. Ooh. Nashville it is. Choo. Nashville. We've already been here. Hmm. I try to mend all the links ass from the truck as fast as I can when the truck empties. It rolls away and another surges up to take his place. Sacks are lumpy, heavy, and stained with dark smears. Ask if they need help. Yes, but it's a laborer. Do we ever? An older fellow, however, throws his arms up to shut the man up. We don't need help with the stuff. He says, stepping close to obscure your view of the goods. Mind fetch of water instead. He wiggles a few coins in your direction. Sure. You feel the trail with, uh, at a nearby gas station. When you return, though, the men are waiting in the alley, innocent in anything. Stick a residue after your hands with the water. The boss passes you a couple coins. There's no sign of the goods anywhere. Move on. Okay, wait. Where the hell did we end up? Oh, nice. Okay, so we were up in, um... Up here? Nashville. We're gonna go this way. Around the mountains. Oh wait, let's take a road. Maybe we can hitchhike find a road. They were hauling drugs. It's hash. It's the only way you get that sticky residue on your fingers. And they were mafiosa. Or mafioso. And they were peddling their drugs. I guess nobody ever goes this way. I'm destined to walk forever. Whoa. You know where we're going, Joe? The wrong way. <laughs> we're going over to Louisville. No, she's not here. Nope, because they wouldn't be so shady about molasses. They'd just be like, yeah, whatever, molasses, sure, help us out. Why the hell would they be all shady about molasses? Doesn't make sense. Let's hear his story. These men lean against the wall of the tire dresser, smoking and chatting. They wave you over. You heard this one before? They launch into a group citation of the ghost who pushed punished spiritualists for their huber hubris, interrupting one another with all their excitements to tell. You recognize the story. It's a story about the seance. Someone's added to it in the meantime, though. What do you think? Asked one of the men in the bright eyes. You think that really happened? <laughs> of course it did. He replies, but damn, it sounds wild. Nice. Well, it's not going to be sticky and dark, Joe. Deep in the fields, you come across a group of young men clearing weeds and sod from a roadside plot. Pitchforks flying, weeds dying. You almost don't notice that the dark lump beside them is a dozing boy lying smack dab in the middle of their work. Was a little prick. There's an odd frenzy to the way these boys are ripping the sod apart. When they notice you approaching, they jog over and stand silently between you and their sleeping comrade. He ain't sleeping, he dead. The youths share nervous looks. The oldest steps forward. G g g get going, he blurts, leveling a pitchfork at your gut. Oh. His hands are shaking. 
He seems serious. You step closer, and the ringleader loses his nerve. <laughs> he died. He blurts. He was sweating and crying, and he just fell over. They won't come get us with the truck till sundown. You realize now that the sleeper has been posed. Oh. The ashy shadow on his face wasn't cast by a tree. You realize that there are no trees. <laughs> a boy who died in the fields where no one could be able to collect his body. Bum, bum, bum. All right, we got a couple things to check out here. Ride with us a little while, stranger. It's a kind offer. Miles of dusty road through the rolling prairies have recast this landscape as an exhausting soup of wind and misery. I hope they don't take me too far. There are four of them on the wagon. A perfect nuclear family. Mother, father, son, daughter. And a small fuzzy terrier trailing behind. But the pace of their movement is glacial. The draft horse ambles forward one agonizingly slow step at a time. I'm just gonna get out and walk. Ain't no point rushing to get where we're going. The wooden cart shivers with every pebble on the road that its wheels must laboriously traverse. The girl in the back pipes up. The going's the point, see? Yeah, while well, I'm leaving. You get to walking at a good pace. And in no time at all, the family has receded into the horizon of the road, where you fully expect they will always be. Don't care. The slow going cart. I don't know what the hell that is. Depressing? The twisters touch down in a cornfield, fence posts flying in its wake. Nice. A huge black stallion charges toward the tornado. On its back, a cowboy whips his lasso through the churning air, nearly matching the twister's speed. His wild laughter carries on the wind. Wow. And Joe, it's all about priorities. Stop your whining. God damn it, Bill! Another man hollers, clapping his hands to his hat to keep it from flying off. Quit being a damn fool! The man on the horse turns toward him and flashes a beatific grin before digging his heels harder into the horse's flanks. Here we go, watch the cowboy! The goes flying, caught by a gust. He doesn't seem to notice. He barks a single yee-haw as he stands in the stirrups, leaning into the whirlwind. In a moment, man and beast are enveloped in the storm. All you can hear is Bill's <laughs> wild laughter. That is awesome. You wanted a better story? We got one instead of riding with the stupid-ass slow-moving wagon. Bill the Cowboy rode into a storm. Uh, okay, we got one story here, and then we'll have a fire. What's this? You spend the bottom of the cool shade at the gas station. Three kids. Parents are fighting. Listen in. Story about a blessed lighthouse sanctuary where souls in love could find a respite. You realize almost instantly he's telling a new version of the tale of the two lighthouse keepers, but with new, exciting, over-the-top details. When the parents come out, you make yourself scarce, and you miss the end of the story, but it'll stick with you for a while. Two people in the lighthouse. Oh, well, he's not dead. The people in the, va uh, the wagon probably are. Okay, you ready for this, Joe? This is for you. Franklin. My boy Franklin. <laughs> it's a funny thing. Someone yeah. looking right through you. But don't lie to me, friend. I know you want to know the truth. What it really means to be a porter. Damn right I do. Well, I can tell you it's more than making white folks happy. That's just how it's supposed to look. <laughs> nice. But you go on so long being how you're supposed to, you're not quite sure how to go back to what you are. 
Though I suppose I can give it a try. Let's do it. Anyway, you must have some funny stories to tell. Share one. I do. It's of a dude that just got sucked up by a freaking, um, what do you call it? A tornado. What the hell? What would that be under? Uh, a woman who studied dust. Pigeon keeper? That had blood in it. And that's what makes me think that it's not look funny at all. <laughs> um... Well, I thought you could go higher. Um, no. Praying in the woods, the white deer, that's kind of creepy. Okay, well, it's a funny story. No. Bushwhacker's Vengeful Ghost, and that's all about sadness. No. Yeah, and that's about joy. Nature, country, home. Love, family, the future. Maybe the fisherman and his fish calling seagulls. Um, yeah, but he wants a funny story, not a scary one. I think I might tell them the seagull one. Well, if that one makes you happy, I guess you. the future's in our hands. Nobody had ever seen organized black folks before the Brotherhood came along. It's on us to make sure that's how it keeps on going. See, I spend a lot of time thinking, will we be the first black union or the only one? Oh, I know what you're talking about. The um, orchestra, not theater. Have any optimistic tales? I'd like to hear one of those. Yeah, I think I do. Uh, where is it? Where the hell is it? Maybe they had two women praying in the forest? Or the apple orchard who planted 10,000 trees? Oh, there, that's the one. Preaching gospel to all those who would listen. Yay. A positive attitude. That's what I like to hear. Yeah, buddy. It's hard to have faith in a person if you never really know them. Yeah, right. And let me tell you, it's hard to really know a porter. At least to know more than what he wants you to know. Ooh, are you going to tell me something? You can let him completely into your life, and he'll keep you in the dark about his. Whoa. Tell me something that'll make me laugh. I, I could use a chuckle. Okay, uh, okay, 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 okay. I got it, I got it, I got it. Uh, where is it? The mischievous ghosts at Cincinnati Music Hall. <laughs> Watch, it'll be scary and it'll be like, oh. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. I think about bondage a lot. <laughs> I bet you do. Is a handful of coins really all it takes to separate a buck from a working man? Potentially. They say old George Pullman only employs black boys to make his trains feel even fancier for white folks. Oh, that's not good. When Mr. Randolph got us all thinking about a union, I remember someone shouting, fight or be slaves. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm in the mood for a good, happy story. You got any? <laughs> Different kind of bondage. Whoops. <laughs> uh, I don't know if this is happy. This is the one where there were all the 
things inside the bottle or whatever the hell it was. Then again, the duck thing, I don't know if that's happy or not either. It is. It says it's under joy, but it's like, what? I think I'm going to do the duck duckies. Because it is a happy. It's Just like I ducks. told you, friend. Miles of smiles. Why didn't that open anymore? When they want to liven spirits up, to bring each other joy, all railroad folk tell the story of the still driving man, John Henry. But only us porters talk about big old daddy Joe, the best porter who ever lived. I've always been more partial to that tale. <laughs> big daddy Joe. Anyway, I'm in the mood for a good happy story. You got any? No, they're all gone. Uh, the ghost who punished the spirits. No. I don't remember if that Apple story was happy. Hmm. The women praying in the woods could be considered happy. We got the love stories, which there's not really anything happy about those right yet. Family of pig fuckers, which we don't really know. I think that was the murderer ones. Uh, time lost souls. And that's all about sadness. We could do the pigeon keeper. Yeah, I don't remember what the hell Quinn's adventures were. Because he's, he's a snot nosed little prick kid that kept crapping all over everything I said. Yeah, I know he's a little tramp, but... Alright, we'll try it. Focused on, focusing on the whole focus. A positive attitude. Alright. That's what I like to hear. Aw, uh, we're almost open. Not full, though. Damn. Travel? It's not just people riding on these railroads. Maybe I'll get another chance. See... Most days I'll pick up a newspaper or a magazine or an album somebody left behind. Then I'll give it a read or a listen and maybe even sell it someplace where they don't know Bessie Smith yet. Ooh. Don't want to hold you here if you need to be going. I've got to be going in the morning too. The next leg of my trip takes me along the rails this way. Where are you headed? <laughs> no freaking clue, dude. If we cross paths again, I'd like to tell you more of the truth about what it's like to be a porter. And what it's like to be in the Brotherhood. Keep an eye out for me, all right? All right. Almost, almost got it. Almost. Okay. We're gonna go into Indianapolis and get a little bit more embellishment on a story. Here we go. Listen to this. Blurts a boy loitering outside a grocery store. He works his way through a long and strange story about the water that turned to wine for the thirsty pickers. There, he finishes. What do you think? Holy shit! You know this story. It's the story of the thirsty cotton pickers, but wildly altered. For a couple of moments, you were too surprised to respond. Seriously, the boy insists. What do you think about that one? Mm, can't be real. Surprisingly, the boy is delighted. That's what I told my brother, he exclaims. But he dunked me in a rain barrel and punched me. That sucks, you tell him. The kid shrugs. I put Wasp in a cups and held it on his back while he was sleeping. So we're square now, I guess. <laughs> I love that. I <laughs> put Wasp in a cup and held it on his back while he was sleeping. Is there anything? That's Indianapolis. Illinois, anything beside me anywhere? Yes, right over here. That's where we headed. <laughs> uh -huh. I don't know what whistling does. I wonder There's if it stops truck cars. Parked here. The driver mistakes your look for curiosity. Want to see something interesting? He asks, pointing to the trunk. He opens it. 
There's hundreds of metal tubes with little numbered screw-on caps sorted in wooden racks. Uh-oh. Is it people's fingers? We've been surveying, he said. It's my job to study soil health. The trunk has a map taped to it, marked with numbered dots. I can show you the one from your hometown if you see it here. It's not on it's the map. It's an official looking map, but the state borders and rivers are wrong. Half your county is missing. The surveyor offers you a coin for directions to your hometown, but his notes are funhouse mirror English writing. <laughs> Fascinating, he murmurs. We learn so much from you folks. Why, thanks. The Strange Soil Surveyor. Hey, who's this? That's the dude, right? Yeah, it is. I don't want to talk to you. I just talked to you. I'm going to walk across this field. Look at me. I'm taller than a windmill. Yep. I sure am. Whoa, bit of a lag spike. Yeah, really weird, isn't it, Joe? Creepy, creepy, creepy. All right, everybody, that's it. That's where I'm calling it right here. Thank you so, so very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, and I will see you all next time. Take care.